Hello everyone, my name is Chandani and I am a student at Clinozole Research. In today's video, we are going to discuss about aggregate reporting in pharmacovigilance. These are the contents involved in my presentation. Let's see what is pharmacovigilance. According to World Health Organization, pharmacovigilance is the science and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse effects or any other medicine or vaccine related problem. We all know when a product is being investigated or released into the market, lot of undesirable and unexpected events occur. So, PV professionals receive the case and report to regulatory authorities. Investigational medicinal product is a product on which the study is conducted, which can be a drug or device or surgical procedure or combination of drugs. Adverse event. All noxious unintended signs and symptoms which may be or may not be related to the drug. That means it may be caused by something other than the drug or therapy being given. Serious adverse event. All noxious unintended signs and symptoms which may be or may not be related to the drug and falls under six seriousness criteria. We will be discussing these six criteria in the next slide. Adverse drug reaction. All noxious unintended signs and symptoms which may be possibly related to the drug at doses normally used in man for therapy of the disease or diagnosis. Serious adverse drug reaction. All noxious unintended signs and symptoms which may be possibly related to the drug and falls under six seriousness criteria. So, the only difference between an adverse event and adverse drug reaction is its relatedness to the drug. Expected event is listed in the investigator's brochure and known to be a side effect of the product, whereas unexpected event not known previously and is not listed in investigator's brochure. Suspected unexpected serious adverse reaction. It is an event which might be caused due to the use of investigational product and is not listed in the product information that is investigator's brochure and falls under six seriousness criteria. These are some of the basic terminology you need to understand in pharmacovigilance. Now let us have a look into the next slide to get a clear picture of all these definitions. As we have just discussed, many undesirable events may occur during a trial and if that event is not related to the drug, then it is called adverse event and if it is related to the drug, then it is called adverse drug reaction. Now if adverse event is serious, it is called serious adverse event. If adverse drug reaction is serious, then it is called serious adverse drug reaction. So what are the criteria for seriousness? There are six criteria for seriousness. An event is described as serious when it results in death, life-threatening, inpatient hospitalization and prolongation of hospitalization, congenital anomaly or birth defect, persistent disability or incapacity or any other medically significant event. Now let's see when a case should be reported. Look at this flowchart for better understanding. First verify if the case is serious or not. If it is not serious then it is not required to be reported. If it is serious then check if the event is related to the drug. If the event is not related to the drug then it is not required to be reported. If yes it is related to the drug then check whether the event is expected or not. If the event is expected then it is not required to be reported. If it is unexpected, then it should be reported. If the case falls under these three criteria, then it should be reported within the following timelines. If it is fatal and life-threatening, then it should be reported within 7 days from the day on which the adverse event is reported. And if the event falls under other seriousness criteria, then it should be reported within 15 days. Now let us see the PV workflow. What happens in pharmacovigilance? First step is case intake. Case is nothing but the adverse drug reaction. Sources of cases can be the following. Clinical trial cases are events occurred during research. Whereas spontaneous cases are nothing but market cases. Once the drug is released into the market, events occurred after it's released into the market are considered as spontaneous cases. In a similar way, literature cases are taken from the literatures published by searching the product name. Internet cases are taken through IVRS and IWRS systems. Once the case is received, the ICSR case processing is done in the following steps. First, they will perform a duplicate check to see if the case is already processed. Then triage means classifying and prioritizing the cases based on seriousness, expectedness and relatedness. Then data is entered into the database and quality of the case is checked for any errors or discrepancies. And medical review is done to ensure accuracy of the case and then case is closed by reporting the adverse drug reactions to regulatory bodies. Regulatory bodies will review the case and takes necessary action like making amendments to prescription and taking measures to minimize the risk factor. One way to report is expedited reporting which means reporting as soon as possible when the case falls under serious unexpected and relatedness criteria. The other way is aggregate reporting about which we will discuss in the next slides. 
Aggregate reporting is the process that reviews the cumulative safety information from a wide range of sources on a periodic basis and submits the findings to regulatory bodies all over the world. Aggregate reporting is also known as periodic reporting. Unlike individual case safety reports, aggregate reporting does not focus on individual cases, but it focuses on overview and assessment of the safety profile and risk benefit evaluation of adverse drug reaction and serious adverse events. When the drug is under research, sponsor is responsible for aggregate reporting and when the drug is released into the market, marketing authorization holder is responsible for aggregate reporting. Sponsor and marketing authorization holder are same, but the terms used in research and market areas are different. What are the benefits of aggregate reporting? It allows us to understand the risk benefit evaluation or in simpler terms risk benefit ratio of the product over a prolonged period of time and it helps in providing broader view of the safety profile of the drug. Coming to responsibilities, first they have to retrieve and analyze the safety data from global safety database. They have to perform consistent and accurate analysis to establish the risk benefit profile of the product. They have to alert the physician of potential events and assist physician in monitoring the safety profile of the product on serious adverse events. Creating and maintaining periodic safety update reports aggregate, uh, that means aggregate reports, timetables or calendars. Tracking and managing preparation of reports based on reporting time period and database lock. Locking is done to avoid further corrections in the database. Aggregate reporting personnel performs medical review of the draft. Submission to the health authorities in compliance with the health authority timelines and handles and responds to queries from health authorities. Aggregate or periodic reports are classified into two types, pre-marketing or pre-approval reports and post-marketing or post-approval reports. Pre-marketing or pre-approval reports include Investigational New Drug Annual Report, Clinical Study Reports, Development Safety Update Report. And post-marketing or post-approval reports include Periodic Benefit Risk Evaluation Report or Periodic Safety Update Report and Periodic Adverse Drug Experience Report. IND Annual Report is a narrative or tabular summary which shows the clinical and non-clinical investigations conducted under the IND application. It has to be submitted every year at a definite time until the final clinical study report for the investigational medicinal product has been submitted to Food Drug Administration. Clinical study report is a written description of a trial or study of any investigational medicinal product which may be therapeutic, prophylactic or diagnostic agent in human subjects in which the clinical and statistical description, presentations and analysis are fully integrated into a single report. Objective of CSR is to allow a single clinical study report which is accepted by all regulatory authorities of the ICH regions. Development safety update report. It covers safety information of IMP, a single DSUR includes safety data from all the clinical trials conducted on that particular IMP across the globe. The safety issues revealed throughout the reporting period should be disclosed in the DSUR. It also provides information on actions taken to reflect new or ongoing risks. It is a pre-marketing equivalent of the post-marketing periodic safety update report. It is submitted every year at a defined time. The main objective is to summarize the potential risks based on the current understanding and management. Annual reports are being replaced by development safety update reports. Coming to post-marketing reports, periodic safety update report is a document which has to provide an update of the worldwide safety experience of a medicinal product to regulatory authorities at a defined time point. Its main objective is to present a comprehensive critical analysis and scientific evaluation of the risk-benefit balance of the medicinal product. Periodic benefit risk evaluation report. It emphasizes risk-benefit ratio by presenting a periodic comprehensive a brief and critical evaluation of new or emerging information on the risks of the drug. It includes any new or recent efficacy data received during the reporting period. It also includes suggested measures to optimize the risk benefit profile. The main objective is to present products overall benefit risk profile and to present investigation of new information on risk of drugs. Periodic Adverse Drug Experience Report It is a document in which all new data from adequate sources is reported and such data is related to interaction or response of patient to the medicine. Its main objective is to provide summary data on the safety profile of the drug and to update and evaluate a medicine's global data and provide information about its safety. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Chandani and I am a student at Clinozol Research. 